of the time in ancient China. There we a great philosopher, a writer, a general, and a military strategist. His name was Sun Tzu. His book, Art of War, is considered as one of the greatest ever book on strategy. I am 100% sure that no strategy course, any typical MBA course, could compete without Anthony Sun Tzu or the Art of War. It is so much so popular that one of my professors would bring that book in classroom, put it in, near the board, bow before it, and then start the class. Sun Tzu was Prime Minister of Chinese Emperor of one part of time. One day he was traveling with Emperor to check the military preparedness of the forward area for a campaign they were planning together. The general of that area came to Sun Tzu and asked him for his advice on how to discipline his troop. As for Sun Tzu's instruction, Dental called all his troop in an open field next morning. Sun Tzu and Emperor, Emperor was there with the general. And they saw that the line of the troop was not in a very good shape and there were noises coming out. And then he was trying all his effort to pacify them, but to no effect. Sun Tzu asked General to give him his sword, General of Life. Sun Tzu took his sword and swung the sword with all his might. Next moment, they rolled the head of General, the blood dripping as it rose. Looking at that, all the troops were in line and there was a complete silence. Sanjay was not just a military strategist, he was a human psychologist kind of guy. He knew what the problem lies. As a military general, you have a power to appoint someone, you have power to dismiss someone, you have a reward power, you have a punishment power, and if you are not able to control your troop, if you are not able to control your troop and align them to your goal, then you are not the leader. So ladies and gentlemen, in today's world also, most of us either face and use souls. They are always at our neck, ready to stop off in a minute of a small mistake. Be it a politician or a corporate leader. In corporate setup, generally leader will use some form of strategy or a type of leadership to deal with those single souls. I will call them group 1, 2, and 3, and let me explain what this group 1, 2, and 3 is. Group 1 are those kind of leaders who generally have a habit of a monologue conversation. You will do of the plan, strategy, and then delegate it to the team member, repeatedly ask, frequently ask for the reports, and would be ready to punish someone if there is any mistake whatsoever it is. You can call them orthographic style of leadership. Second group of the second group of people, those who actually seek ideas from your team members, sit with them, make out a plan and implement it. You can call them democratic style of leadership. And third group are those people who seek ideas from the team members. He will call it with delegated feedback and probably he will go for a holiday come back and ask for a report. You can call them a very steady type of leadership. Which one is the best leadership? I don't know. I think it depends on situations and environment you are operating. In text, you will have many more type of leadership and sometimes it's very confusing. Personally, uh, I have been in leadership position for the last six, seven years and my experience has been quite different. I have been you are evaluating myself. I will take one instance where actually I feel is very important where I have been able to judge myself. In my previous organization, I joined as a head of analytics in uh, an internet startup. At that point of time, because of high demand in the market, I was not really able to get any good guy who has a request skill and expertise on digital and analytics. So I had to hire people who are totally below power at that point of time. I trained them mentor them and I have been able to deliver very good results. First over two years now after that deal, still I have a great contact with them. 
Most of them still want to work with me. Most of them consider me as a guru and their mentor. And they seek my advice today still for any kind of courses they want to do, for any career move they want to make. For me, I think uh, one test of leadership is not when you are with the team, because at that point of time, they are biased or maybe they are fearful of talking to you. But when they are not part of your team, you can assess what kind of improvement or uh, career growth those people have got and how, what kind of relationship you will still have with those people. That is one test of IT leadership you can do. Hiring a good guy for a good company and delivering a good results is I think no brainer and it's still normal. If you really want to test yourself, one test for all of us is hire someone at level 1, train him to be at the level 2, then give him a task which is a level 3 and then motivate him to deliver level 4 of results. That is a real test of leadership for me and for all of us I guess. Thank you, thank you everyone.